Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Today I'm going to show you how to turn this into this. And uh, what this is, is a uh, general uh, count the countdown timer. You can count down up to 99 minutes and 59 seconds and you can pro program anywhere in between. Uh, and it is under relay control, so uh, once the time elapses, the relay turns on. You can also pause it and reset at any time during operation. It's Everything is programmed using one button. At the end of this video I'll give a demonstration, but this is mainly an assembly video. I also have a demonstration video. This also has um, one extra capability. Uh, you can cause it to count down 20 times as fast. And I will give, show you how to do that during the demonstration. So let me show you the components. Let me go through the components with you. We've got a 5 volt relay, 2 pin terminal block, momentary push button, uh, 5 2N2222 NPN transistors, a one micro, uh, 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor, a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, a 1N4004 diode, 7 10K ohm resistors, 8 uh, 470 ohm resistors, a 3 pin terminal block, a piece of wire, small, uh, single grain, a 7805 5 volt regulator, uh, five millimeter power jack, uh, six pin header, and a common anode four digit seven segment display, 12 pins. And they're all going to fit onto this custom circuit board, and I'm going to show you how to do it. First of all, we're going to start with our resistors. Okay, so you have seven 10k ohm resistors and eight 470 ohm resistors. The eight 470 resi ohm resistors go here, 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 here here, 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 here. And they're all labeled 470 ohm, 470 R. Your 10K ohm resistors go here, 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 and here. So R9, R10, uh, R11, R15, R14, R13, and R12. They're all labeled that and 10K. So next we will do our capacitors, our transistors, and our diode. Something I should mention now as opposed to later uh, is the six pin header. Now this is an option. You don't have to use this. You can use this. Uh, regardless, even if you don't, you can still solder to the board later if you want to. Now if you want to use some of the extra functions on this uh, and you want to actually connect via header, what you want to do is before you put the seven segment display on, uh, you want to be able to solder this bad boy to the back of the board. And the pins labeled 54105 volts and ground. Uh, what you can do is actually you can use the small pins from the back of the board place it in to the middle set of six pins and solder it from the front of the board so that those are sticking out and you can put it into your breadboard or other circuit if you want because the pins will be sticking out that's the front of the board that is the back of the board so that's an option you have if you're going to do that do it now uh, otherwise, if you don't do it now, once you put the 7 segment display in, you'll have a much more difficult time doing that. However, you can always just simply solder wires to it later on if you want to, if you want to be able to interface with an external circuit. Uh, but again, that's up to you. So, do it at your own discretion, and uh, next we will do again the capacitors, uh, diode, and transistors. Okay, so our uh, 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor has a short lead and a long lead. The long lead is your positive, the short lead is your negative, and that goes in the C2 slot. On the left side of the, uh, of the board, there's a, uh, a footprint for it, and uh, the left pin has a little pop, uh, plus sign above it, that's your positive, and the right side doesn't have anything on it. So place your long lead on the left, in the left hole, and your short lead on the right. If you turn that around and power it on, uh, you might blow up that capacitor when you turn it on, and that'll be bad news. Your single 0.1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, your decoupling capacitor, goes in the C1 slot. It is not polarized, both leads are the same size, so just make sure that it is placed properly and flush uh, into those leads. Your diode has a stripe on it, which is your cathode, your negative, and the other side is your is uh, just black and that is your anode or positive. And that goes in the D1 slot. The D1 slot on the right, there is a white stripe. Make sure that your cathode or negative goes on the right, matching from a bird's eye view the white stripe on the diode to the white stripe on the footprint. The black side goes in the left. Don't turn that around, or else as soon as you activate the uh, relay, you will short your circuit and your circuit will reset. Very, very important that you get that polarity correct. Your five transistors, your 2N2222 NPN transistors have a flat side and a curved side. 
the flat side has writing on it, it says 2 and 2, 2, 2, 2, and the, uh, the curved side does not have any writing on it. As you can see, it's, it's uh, turning back and forth on its curved side. And then go in the T5, T4, T3, T2, and T1 slots. Now on the on the footprint, there's a curved side and a flat and a there's a curved side and a flat side, flat side, curved side, flat side, curved side, flat side, curved side, and so on. If you uh, you have to make sure that they match up from a bird's eye view. If you turn them around, um, your digits on your seven segment display will not light up, and in the case of T5, your relay will not turn on. Be very careful not to reverse those. Match the curved sides to the curved sides on the transistor and the flat sides on the footprints to the flat sides on the uh, on the uh, footprints. So uh, solder those in a place. Make sure there are no shorts, especially on the transistors. And next, we will do our uh, terminal blocks, our button, and our five uh, our five millimeter jack. Okay, the three pin terminal block has a terminal side and a plastic side. Same with the two pin terminal block. It has a two pin terminal side and a plastic side. Make sure that in both cases the terminal sides are facing outside of the board. If you have them facing inside the board, you'll have a hell of a time uh, getting your wires connected. Now your 5mm jack has three pins on it, and it only fits in one way, with the jack portion facing outside the board. Uh, you don't have to apply a ton of heat. You don't have to make sure that the holes are completely filled with solder for this bad boy. You just have to make sure that the leads are all soldered in one way. You really don't have to fill up fill the gaps. If you do overheat it, you will melt the 5mm jack. Now the nice thing about the board is that if by chance you do this, and you really shouldn't, uh, you can use this uh, terminal block as, an, as a, a, a separate means of powering your board. The neat, neat thing about this board is that you have both options. You can use a, uh, an AC adapter or you can use a power supply of other sorts by using this terminal block input. Now lastly, the button, the momentary push button, goes in the S1 slot. It really only fits in one way. Line up the uh, four pins and pop it into place. It should go flush down on the board, so make sure before you solder it in that it is flush to the board. Especially for the uh, three-pin terminal block, make sure that your solder connections are very well-defined and thick, and that they are not messy or cold solder joints, because those will be your high-power outputs uh, controlled by the relay. So next, we will do our uh, a relay and our 7805 and that will be our second last step. I've decided that I'm going to get rest, the rest of the hardware done in one step because there is actually one step after this and includes the wire. I, you know, another thing is I forgot to include during the introduction two of the most important components that come with this kit and that is the my programmed microcontroller, the PIC 10F2 or PIC 18F1220 and the 18 pin socket. Now we might as well do the socket first. Socket and the microcontroller you have to be very careful of. They have a notch on the left hand side and the, uh, the the footprint has a notch on the left hand side. You have to make sure that from a bird's eye view you place the socket in uh, with this, the notch on the left and the from this perspective and the microcontroller with the notch facing the left. If you power it up with the microcontroller with the face having the notch on the right, you'll burn up your microcontroller and your kit will not work. So be very careful. Another thing about the socket is make sure that there are no shorts. It's very easy to short them, so be, use a fine tip soldering iron. The 7805 has a front side which is black and a back side which is more of a whitish gray. There's a stripe on the 7805 footprint right here. Make sure that the back is facing the white stripe so the front faces the 5mm jack, like so. If you turn that around, your circuit will not regulate properly to 5 volts. Um, make sure it's as far down as it will go. The 5 volt relay has 5 pins. You can't place this in the wrong way. There's 3 pins on one side, 2 on the other. Make sure it's flush to the board and um, make sure that there's a healthy amount of solder on each of the pads. It should flow quite nicely. The 7 segment display uh, has uh, white dots on the bottom sides. And on the foot on the footprint it might be difficult to see there's dot 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 and dot. Make sure that the dots are facing the bottom of the board, like so. There are twelve pins, uh, six on the bottom, six on the top. If you reverse this, you're gonna be toast because you won't be able to desolder it. Not easily. Um, so again, the decimal places I should say on the bottom should face the microcontroller right here. 
don't reverse that. Now once you've done that, all we have to do is apply one wire and we can power it up and test it. Now this might be a little bit difficult to understand, just try to follow closely here. This is an already finished module. This is the module that we are working on currently. You'll notice that there's a wire here. And from the back view, this is actually the 7805. There's three pins. And the bottom pin from this perspective, the 7805, uh, we want to solder a wire to. And the other side of that wire, we have two options. We can either solder that wire to the top of any of our transistor pins, as seen here. From this perspective, we've uh, soldered the other end to the top wire of the, the, uh, one of our transistor pins. Or we can solder to the top middle pin of our, uh, our microchip right here. So actually, in this case, I soldered the bottom pin to the top of the transistor. In this case, I'm going to solder the bottom pin, just to show you some different options, to the top pin of the microcontroller from this perspective. Uh, what that's doing is I, there was an accident in, uh, in the PCB B fab where that line was not connected. So you have to take a wire and manually connect it. Very easy to do. It just takes a second. I will do it right now and show you it afterwards. So there you go. Uh, soldered from the bottom pin of the 7805 to the top middle pin of our uh, microchip. And so now let's test and power it on. Now the lighting is like this for a reason. I just want it's the best light to show you the display. Power it on. Uh, now in order to increment the se the first second uh, segment, all you have to do is press the S1 button without holding it. Just increment it. And once it gets to nine, if you keep incrementing, it'll go back to zero. So if you want to go into the next digit. Hold the button down, let go, and this is this 10 second digit, and it can be programmed from 0 to 5, 5, 9, 59 seconds. So let's just go on to the next one. This is our single minute uh, digit. So again, you can increment this from 0 to 9. You can program this to 99 minutes and 50, 59 seconds. So I'm just going to go on to the last digit and program in it for 30 minutes. I'll hold the button. Let go. Next button starts it. And uh, so, if you want to pause it at any time, once this, once this, sorry, let me let's continue that thought in a second. Once this runs out, relay turns on, and after the relay turns on, you can hold the cell button down to reset the system. So, if I want to pause it, I hold, the, I press the button, and it goes into a power saving mode. And if I want to unpause it, press the button again. Pause it at 2940. Now, if I want to reset it, I hold the button. Let go. There you go. Now, let me quickly show you the timeout function, or the, the quick time function. Now, I'm going to program this in, in for 10 minutes. I use this function more for my uh, time bomb props. It doesn't really, it's not really all that helpful here. If you want to speed it up for the, re for the relay to turn on, great. Uh, but you can still pause it and reset it. So if I want to make this timing go down at 20 times the speed, what I have to do is, on the back, and I know it might be very difficult, do you remember that four, six pin header we put on? Place one on the five volt pin, which is the second in from the bottom, and connect it, even just for a split second, to pin number four. It's labeled a four on the device. As you can see, all you need is a quick pulse, and it starts uh, going down at uh, 20 times the speed. So if you're interested, this will be available in assembled form and, form and, uh, this is, and in kit form at engineeringshock.com. We'll have listings with and without a uh, with and without a wall adapter, and so you'll have the freedom to choose. Listen, relay turns on, and uh, I'll turn it off. Relay turns off, resets. Thanks for watching, everyone.